a good afternoon and uh, this is Bill by the way I'm Sean I don't want to I don't want to be mistaken for my manager Come on. Hey, we got a joke there all right let's go um, so the first thing we're actually going to do today um, just just as a quick intro for us as a team uh, we're the developer and cloud advocacy team at VMware uh, we run a website uh, called cloud journey IO um, it's a little bit different there's absolutely no mention of vSphere or VMs anywhere on this thing so it's a little bit different for VMware um, and so that's why we tend to push it pretty hard. Uh, but we're, we're, we're a small team and, and really we're excited to be here today uh, to talk about the journey of continuous verification. So before we jump into the slides, I'm absolutely going to show you a live demo uh, of our pipeline. So let me uh, jump over here. So this is what we are looking at today in GitLab. Uh, this is actually our application. It's a microservices based application. Um, and, and I know Bill will talk a little bit more about it. Uh, there are multiple services associated with it. I'm going to make a modification to the cart service just to kick off the pipeline. Uh, and then I'll come back a little bit later on and do a little bit further demo with it. So let me jump over to VS Code. And I will uh, just make sure I'm in the right directory. Perfect. So I'm going to make a modification to the Docker file because they don't let me touch production code. Um, it's true. Uh, so let me uh, jump down here real quick. So I'm going to delete this and insert London commit. Perfect. All right. Hit add. That's all the fun stuff we have to do. Oops. And no, I did not document that properly. You'll get over it. Get push. All right. So I am now pushing this. Come on, internet. Work with me. There we go. If I jump back over to GitLab, you should see, let's double check, just now. So we're now kicking off the pipeline, and let me validate right there just so everybody sees it's going, and then I'm going to turn it over to Bill, and I will come back a little bit later on and show you the stages as they run. Can I switch over? Absolutely, I can do that. Is that better? Perfect. Thank you for uh, being an interactive audience. There Thank you. you. So, uh, thanks, Sean. So, as, as the pipeline is uh, kind of moving along here, um, I'm going to talk a little about what we're showing, right? What is the concept? And it goes back to the title of this talk, which is Continuous Verification. Uh, we'll come back to the pipeline in a few minutes, right? And we'll take a look at some of the bits. Um, but let me give you a little bit of background on it and what that means. <coughs> um, you know, if we kind of think about where we've evolved from and where we are evolving to, right, uh, lots of different types of applications, the architectures have changed significantly, right? So you're no longer in a stack-based environment. You're looking at LAMP stacks or other types of component ar architectures. Today, <coughs> you've got a myriad of different uh, languages, types of databases, different environments that you're running on too, right? from Amazon to on-prem to Kubernetes and serverless, right? And so the combinations are endless. The ability to kind of manage that and actually work through it is mind-boggling, right? In actually getting control of it. But if we think about how to get control of it, right? <coughs> the application is first and foremost the key, or actually, as we think about it, the unit of measure now, because those environments are varied. Um, and in order to kind of get that control, right? The CI/CD pipeline, is, as, I, as, as we think about it, is the vehicle, right, for getting that control. Because a lot of the processes and the components that you are going to implement are going to be in and out of that pipeline, right? So, you know, we talk about two parts of it, right, which is the CI and then the CD components. And at the end of the day, um, you, you're going to have a significant portion of the CI that will go and cover things like SAS, DAST, and we talked a little bit earlier, you know, about the security components. But there's a lot of bits that you could do in the CD portion also. Um, and if we think about what those bits are, right, you have to think about how you're managing uh, your processes today. Um, you're going to have a, a set of guidelines or guardrails and, and components that you think about. If I go and deploy an application, I want to make sure that I have enough capacity in Amazon. I want to ensure that I have a significant set of security qualifications that are done 
before and after it goes into, let's say, the endpoint. And a lot of these <coughs> checks that we do on a regular basis are done sort of post-deployment, in some cases pre, right? There may be sneaker net, right? You're kind of going around checking the application and the, the, the actual deployment architecture where it goes and double checking those configurations prior to it. And in some cases, we're gonna go post. And a lot of times, uh, we find issues, right? Post because something has changed. Something has not been accounted for uh, at the end of the day. And, you know, this causes issues with respect to how we actually manage and where we spend our time. Now, ideally, you know, if we think about this pipeline that we're managing, and it's, it has to be efficient and effective, right, from end to end, uh, a good analogy that I can draw for you is think about a, a car factory, right? And if you think about cars being manufactured today, they are done very effectively and efficiently, right? There's a lot of components that are reused, a lot of components <coughs> that are checked on a regular basis. And if you, if you think about that, um, there's people that are, that are checking the quality of that car as it's going through. And the failure rates are, are, you know, yes, we do have recalls, right? But in reality, given the number of cars that are produced, the quality is pretty high for that complex of a, of, of a product, right? And we can only aspire to have software development producing our end applications at that level, right? And if you think about where the efficiency comes when we think about that um, uh, pipeline, right? It really comes through the reuse of components. If you think about, uh, I don't know, we'll take Ford as an example, you know, the different, or, or Toyota, right? I mean, a Camry and a, and a, and a a uh, couple of the other cars are based off the same platform. So they're reusing those components, but also during their build processes, they're reusing a lot of those bits too, right? From the checks to the actual parts itself. And the checks are the important piece because that's what helps improve the quality, right? And there's a process of actually thinking about those checks. And if we take the same concept and that thought process uh, from a car manufacturing line and we apply it to, um, our CI CD pipeline, right? Uh, you know, we live and breathe in this, this kind of flow that's highlighted here. And that's standard where we live nowadays. But if we take that analogy back to the automotive industry and, and that pipeline, and we add similar sort of checks, right? We essentially extend that pipeline now. We have an ability to do different sort of checks on a regular basis. And those checks will check for anything from, you know, budget, or performance, or security. And that is what we call uh, continuous verification. It's effectively the ability to query external systems to get information about what is happening currently, and then taking that information and reformulating another sort of guardrail or or I would say policy, and then continuously working through that, right, on a regular basis, because things are changing, right? And if you look at our output from your, uh, or your endpoints, Amazon, you got features coming in on, what, daily basis, right? So there's, it is going to be a continuous process. You can't just um, set it and forget, right? It's a constant learning process. But the fact that you can use these external actors is important because that gives you the information to act upon uh, issues that could potentially crop up. And so what does that mean for us, right? That means as DevOps people, right, get more time off, you get more time to relax, um, and your life should improve, right? Ideally. So what we'll show today is how you can use um, specific external actors uh, in the pipeline, and in particular, we'll show uh, ones that are highlighted here in circle and purple, which are the ones that VMware offers, uh, but there's a myriad of options that you can choose from. And if you look at some of the categorizations that we have here, right, it is sort of endless, but we, we picked a few that we thought were important, obviously based on some of the products that we have. Um, cost and utilization being one of them, uh, and that we have a product called Cloud Health. 
Compliance is huge, right? Now there's some open source tools. There's also uh, off the shelf ones like Redlock or our product, Secure State, and we'll show you a little bit of that. You have image security, right? Claire, as an example, that's open source and then and, and GitLab in, in, um, integrates with that. Um, we also have Bitnami on our side. Um, and then you, you know, for access and authorization, how would I do that? We're definitely going to use API calls into Amazon. You'll use um, things like Turbot, which is a, an off-the-shelf product also. And then performance detection, we have Wavefront, another product of ours, and so on and so forth. What you pick and choose is all up to you in this pipeline, right? These are just some categories. There's no necessarily sense that you have to pick everything, but that's really based on your processes and what you choose as an SLA to make sure that that gets checked before something goes into staging or production, right? And so that, that, that list of categories could be endless. What you pick and how you utilize it and what combination, it's all up to you. There's no necessarily right or wrong. Uh, the fact is that you need to be adding this to help make it efficient, right? Um, and that's what we, we call continuous verification. So, so I think what we'll do now is to switch back into the scenario that um, Sean kicked off, and we'll kind of work through that. Yeah, <coughs> absolutely. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. There we go. Apparently, me coming back on the stage was not in the plan. Uh, so I do want to look at this real quick. So in, 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 in the broader case uh, of our application that we've built, you see a bunch of microservices there on the left-hand side, obviously under the build stage. Um, for the sake of time, uh, I only chose to modify the cart service and have it kick off its process. Um, it takes about nine to 10 minutes, depending on the scenario. The back end, just so you're aware, is uh, Azure um, AKS, uh, obviously from a Kubernetes perspective. Um, and so let's jump into, let's jump back into GitLab here, and I'll show you a little bit of what is going on from this particular process. It actually succeeded, and it only took seven minutes. It's faster over here, apparently. Uh, you can tell I, I ran it the other day, and it failed miserably, um, or, well, because of me. Uh, but anyway, so in this case, here's my pipeline. I show all of the stages that are complete. So I'm actually going to walk through a little bit of this to help us understand uh, really the power of GitLab, uh, along with this, uh, the idea of continuous verification. Um, so in this case, I'm obviously building the uh, cart service. Uh, pretty simple stuff here. Uh, you can see all the output. Yes, we need to upgrade PIP. I understand that. Uh, and, and really, this is meant to fail in a couple of ways. Uh, but here's a you know, quick example of the build. Uh, I'll jump back in to the overall pipeline. So we broke this down into stages, um, and in some cases we are running simultaneously. So our scanning stage is, I, uh, excuse me, uh, the next one we will, will be two things at once. But this is the container scanning stage focused on Claire. And yes, we do have some unapprovals. And yes, I use the power of GitLab to override uh, my failures. This is meant to be a demo. Uh, I think everybody understands that. Um, not a real production app, right? I have to clarify that every time I talk about it uh, because it might be running on something on VMware. Uh, but anyway, so in this case, here's all my CVEs that have failed. Right? This is the power of GitLab, obviously, the integrations with Claire. Uh, and, and, you know, personally for me, uh, when looking at, at GitLab and utilizing GitLab in this case, I actually love the simplicity of the output, um, uh, really from a, uh, from a terminal perspective. And obviously, it's tied to my uh, commit if I would have labeled it properly, right? It just says London. Now, let me jump into the next stage. So this one's a little bit fun. In this case, uh, I am actually doing a couple of governance checks. Now, as, as Bill mentioned in this idea of continuous verification, we used a couple of VMware solutions in this particular case, but you can use your own. Uh, we've actually seen some very unique scenarios where a single customer may have uh, Wavefront and Prometheus or Wavefront and uh, uh, Datadog, right? This, the idea and, and really the power of GitLab behind it allows you to have um, really your organization's context in mind. So in this case, I'm gonna do a quick budget check. Now, in our example, um, we are making an API call wrapped in uh, Python to Cloud Health, right? It's very simple. We're looking to see if I have budget for this particular use case um, and, and for this particular project. Um, and and you know, in, in some cases, you may not be doing this yet, uh, but when, when I've uh, started talking with customers over the past few months, 
they said, you know, we don't really do budget checks. We don't do cost analysis from a CICD perspective. Um, you know, the line of business owner actually does care, but it is a manual step. And like, you know, we can actually automate this. And so it's just getting, it's, it's really getting you thinking about ways to improve the overall processes. Uh, and I call it automate all the things uh, or automate all of the manual things. So in, the, in this case, it's a simple one about doing a simple budget check. Is it within budget? Um, we wrapped, like I said, we wrapped it in Python, made the necessary check. The second, uh, the second check in this phase is a security check. Um, now, in this, uh, in this example, we are using uh, VMware Secure State. Um, obviously, I, I did the same thing as you see earlier. I'm running a VSS Findings uh, Python example, and I am really looking for, is, a, is there any violations found? Um, so I do want to say there is a violation found um, in this particular example. So let me jump back into Secure State real quick. Um, I'm looking at all of the violations. This is a graphical representation, um, but let me... Uh, let me uh, remove my provider real quick, just to show you we're looking at, you know, we can look at both AWS and Azure uh, from an example perspective, um, and look at different things like port 22, uh, you know, is RDS accessible, do I have encryption, right, there's so many different things we could check for, uh, but in this example, I, I did narrow it down, and we're looking if port 22 is open. Uh, and so this is the graphical view, uh, but for me, you know, I don't really care about this view, right? We, we made sure that we wrapped up the security check from a GitLab perspective in Python, ran a quick validation, got some uh, output uh, from, the, uh, uh, from this particular case, and then decided we're okay with the failures and continue on in the GitLab perspective. Um, now, I do want to show you what we did from a cloud health uh, point of view as well. So here is the graphical representation. Here shows my budgeting from an Azure perspective. Uh, obviously, I have uh, a plethora of ways to look at this. I'm showing you kind of the broader view. I could launch directly into AKS or, or the Azure Kubernetes service and show you what my expenses are. Really, this is meant to highlight really the power and, and really your options. Um, so we're looking at the overall Azure uh, expense overall in a month. But you could get very granular, right? You could do it at a project-based level. You could do it at an application. Right? We, we want to put it back in your hands. Um, and really, this is the, you know, from an API perspective, we're giving you options. And so however you want to run the, 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 uh, the, the cost check is really up to you. And this is just meant to be a simple example, okay? So if I jump back uh, lastly from a pipeline view, I see a couple more stages. Uh, I see my deployment stage. Obviously, it's passed. Um, you know, the, the, really this is the, uh, the, the simple piece, right? We're just continuing the process uh, of building out, and here's all of my, uh, you know, here's my create namespace, GitLab username login. One of the unique things that we've done, uh, our team, uh, we have a, a couple of Kubernetes cl uh, clusters uh, running in AKS, uh, and for each of us, when we kick off this pipeline, we actually have it auto-creating a namespace for us. And so I have my own namespace, Bill has his own, the rest of the team. Um, and this allows us to do some fun things and get creative, right? We're just using the power of variables uh, uh, within GitLab to, to highlight really the simplification of our process, really depending on our needs. Um, and so this is just one of the examples right there. That's why you see GitLab user log, and that would be me. Um, I already had it populated, so that's why it took only seven minutes to recreate the cart service. Uh, but the overall process takes about 20 minutes in deploying the seven different services. So lastly, I'll show you one more. Uh, we see the overall, you know, uh, excuse me, one more check. This is our performance check. Uh, we're doing two things in this particular stage. We're actually running Locus from a traffic generation perspective, uh, and then we are, uh, you know, running a quick test uh, to do some, uh, you know, simple, you know, uh, uh, user performance testing, right? Obviously, you can expand this. You're, you're probably doing a lot more than we are in this pretty simple view. Uh, but then we call Wavefront. Now, uh, Wavefront, right? Prometheus, Wavefront, Datadog as an example. We're running a very simple check here. You see uh, we're checking the Kubernetes pod container CPU usage rate, right? We're looking for it to be at a specific uh, a level, and in our case, we're not really doing anything because it's not a real production app, but it's spun up, Locust, did a couple of tests, it's fine, and then obviously it, it spins back out and says, hey, we're good, you're gonna go ahead and continue and uh, allow this particular check to run through. Uh, now, isn't it, you know, for, for us, and I'll, I'll do this later on, I, I don't know why I didn't add it to the deck, uh, we have all of our kind of test checks that we have running, 
Um, we can actually, uh, I'll push those out to a repo and make those available. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it out on Twitter. Uh, is, uh, to, to make it available to everyone, just kind of see what we're doing um, as, a, uh, as kind of a simplification uh, of the process. And obviously we deployed a production from there. So overall, um, you know, it, it, as Bill mentioned, this is really about you utilizing your solutions uh, and, and tool sets, right? If it doesn't have an API, write a, write a wrapper or do something creative with it. But at the end of the day, our goal, this really kind of as we've worked with customers, is we're seeing more and more customers try to take those manual processes or enterprise IT-centric processes and push them into the pipeline. Right, in this case, we're using some of our tooling, some open source tooling, uh, but it really comes back down to you and to your context and your organization as an example. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Bill and uh, we're gonna move on to uh, the next stage. Okay, thanks, Sean. So hopefully that provides you a, a, a really good example, a simple example of what s continuous verification is and you know, <coughs> specific checks that you can make. And I don't think you always think about these sort of checks inside the CD environment, but hopefully this gives you an idea to start adding some of these, right? Now, apart from just implementing this, <laughs> um, there's something else you gotta think about. So let me run through the story with you guys, right? Think of DevOps as a border collie. Okay, start with that concept. And think about what a border collie actually goes and manages, right? As a DevOps person, it manages a couple of apps, or sheep. And initially, it's kind of easy, right? You're going to be managing that pipeline and those applications or sheep in this space. It's easy, I got it, not a problem. Gets a little bit more, you know, they grow. Yeah, I still have some control at this point, right? And this is, okay, and I can still implement, let's say, CV. Organization grows even further, and oh God, eh, we're just out of control now, right? And <clears throat> this is where, you know, implementing, let's say, CV takes on a whole different thought process. It's not just about adding those checks, right? And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. Um, so if we think about <clears throat> what we're trying to do is, you know, if you think about the border collie and having to manage, um, you know, you don't want them managing this, this, this sheep kind of going in all different directions, right? <clears throat> and having and taking control of that is pretty hard. We've got a significant herd now going out and actually going all over the place or running towards the lake. But what you want to do is to be able to uh, have some control over them. And how do you do that, right? So if you look at the picture on the right, you know, basically fencing them in creating some kind of control, or gates and fences and gates, as we call it, to help control, right, that, those, uh, those sheep. And at the end, what happens, right? You have uh, a, bo a border collie that is frustrated, right? Instead of this, you're gonna get one that's very happy because, hey, now there's some control, it's not running around as much, it's much happier. Okay, so. If you think about this with respect to continuous verification, right, what you want to try to do is, and the question for you guys is, do you guys want to go chase the herd? Or do you actually want to go build what, what I just mentioned is called fences and gates, right? And the implementation of continuous verification is not just adding those API calls that we talked about and what Sean showed, but it's about actually thinking about a full line of guardrails. Right? And those guardrails are what you have to manage to effectively make your operations more efficient. Right? And those guardrails are what I will, in this analogy, what we call fences and gates. So if you think about what we showed in that pipeline, right? we had a set of checks. Okay, you can call it policy. I don't like using that term policy because it has so many different connotations. We use guardrails, right? That's why we pick fences and gates. And we had a continuous security or a security check that he showed you. We had a cost check that we actually uh, implemented, right? And there's so many different variants of that, right? And we did one on performance. But managing those guardrails, you're going to keep that again in files. And I think he showed you one with cost where it was actually pulling out of a JSON file, right? And you're gonna continuously iterate that. But getting a good handle on what your policy is, is the biggest 
step, it is probably the biggest hurdle, right, in understanding that and then having to iterate on that on a regular basis. So it's not just going in, okay, we'll just go add these checks. But you have to have that entire process put together and then iterating through your fences and gates is probably the hardest one because it requires buy-in from you to think about it, but buy-in from the actual app teams, the security teams, and then continuously verifying and checking that and just iterating that on a regular basis, right? So those are the two pieces, right? Continuous verification um, includes the implementation of these guardrails. And so finally, if we um, just, you know, to conclude, you know, I think, you know, hopefully what we've shown you today is that, you know, with a little bit of work, a um, little bit of thought process, and a, a you know, kind of introspection of what's happening in your processes, and by adding these checks um, in an appropriate locations, and in particular, we did this in the CD component with GitLab, as an example, you can really achieve a really efficient and effective process on a regular basis and utilize information on a regular basis to continuously improve upon that process. Um, we particularly obviously showed you some of, the, some of the tools that we have here at VMware, uh, and hopefully you know, the combination of some of those, like Cloud Health and Secure State and Wavefront in conjunction with GitLab uh, and Bitnami will give you a really nice kind of solution. Um, you obviously can pick what you want from the outside. We hopefully this framework that we've showed you, right, is making you guys think a little bit about, hey, maybe I should go implement this, right, and kind of think about this. Um, and if that's the case, I think we've achieved at least the thought process today. So that's all we have, and we'll open it up for some questions.